27th of December, 2021, Melbourne, Australia. It's day two of the third Ashes test between Australia and England, held in the iconic Melbourne cricket ground. After being bowled out for 185 in the first innings, England came out to bat for a second time, hoping to surpass Australia's score of 267. But what would happen in that innings would become the stuff of legend. With fading light, a raucous local crowd and only 10 minutes left until the end of day's play, England were already 2 for 22 down, and Aussie captain Pat Cummins throws the ball to local boy Scott Boland. The rest is history. Ball 1, left alone. Ball 2, left alone. Ball 3, Ball four, defended. Oh, just. Ball five. Again, look at that cordon behind him. Bowled oh. him! Bowler John Fire at the G in England. They are crashing down. Ball six, glance to the leg side. England finish at stumps with four for 31. The following day, Boland would come back out and get wickets three, four, five, and six. leaving with bowling figures of 6 for 7 and helping Australia to retain the Ashes at home. Since this series, some people have wondered whether Scott Boland's performances were a flash in the pan, or if Scott Boland can continue these performances for years to come, maybe even away from home. In this video, we analyse what makes Scott Boland such a tough bowler to face, why it has taken so long for him to break into the Australian side, and if he has a long-term place in Australia's first 11. By the end of it, you will know why Scott Boland really is that good. Before we move on, just a quick thanks to you for checking out this video. If you enjoy it or any other video on this channel, please be sure to leave a like or even consider subscribing. Make sure to hit that bell notification too so that you don't miss any more 6 and Out content which is on the way. With that being said, let's get moving. What makes Scott Boland such a good bowler? There are many different ways that fast bowlers have gotten their wickets throughout history. Some have expressed pace and intimidate bowlers into mistakes, while others rely on swing or even changes of pace to earn their success. Scott does not bowl express pace or have crazy swing, but what he does use is perhaps the oldest method of all, accuracy. Scott has the ability to put the ball on a specific line and length, ball after ball after ball. This has led to some commentators comparing him to one of those bowling machines that gets used during practice sessions. But some of you might be wondering, well if he bowls at the same place over and over again, doesn't that mean batters will know where the ball is going and by extension it will be easier for them to hit it? Well, it's not that simple. You see, Bolin often pitches the ball back of a length around fourth stump line outside off. In plain terms, that means it's around here to the right hander and when it gets to the batter, the ball ends up very close to the line of the batter's off stump which means they feel that they can't leave it because it looks like it might hit the wickets if they do. It is known as the doorway to departure, or the avenue of apprehension, or, well, you get the point. It's not that fun. He has the ability to pitch ball after ball in an area the size of a napkin, which means batters are always under pressure. The second part of this is that he is a seam bowler by trade, meaning that he bowls the ball in such a way that the seam of the cricket ball will make contact with the pitch and bounce off in different directions from ball to ball. This natural variation in where the ball goes adds even more uncertainty to the batter's mind. One might go straight, the next left, and the next right. It means that batters are put in an uncomfortable position of not really being able to totally trust their own judgement on which balls to hit and which to leave. The final kicker to all of this is, Boland is a workhorse of a fast bowler, forged on the often lifeless and batter-friendly pitches of the MCG during the mid to late 2010s. Playing for the Victorian stateside, Boland was relied upon to bowl a significant amount of overs for his team's fortunes, including the three-peat title-winning sides from 2014-15 to 2016-2017. As you can see on this table, if you go into the 2017-2018 and 2018-2019 seasons, Boland also bowled the most overs for his entire team in those seasons, including bowling the most overs of any bowler in the competition during 2018-2019. He was also the third highest wicket taker for both of those seasons. These three qualities, his accuracy, his seam bowling and his endurance make Scott Boland the quality bowler that he is today, regardless of if the conditions suit him or not. 
With all this talk of how good he is, you might be wondering, then why did it take so long for him to get a call up to the test side? Well, from the outside, it's really a difficult thing to know for sure, but I think there is one central factor in all of this, and that's competition. Australia is one of the most competitive places in the world to become an international fast bowler. Not only do the conditions suit fast bowlers, but the folklore and history of Australian cricket means that there are no shortage of people who want to become the next Brett Lee, Glenn McGrath or Pat Cummins. Not only do you have to be good to get into the side, the stars have to kind of align a little bit. Someone needs to be injured or going through some poor performances to be replaced. Scott Boland's most successful domestic seasons prior to his international debut were in 2015-16, 2017-18 and 2018-19. In 2015-16, there was no opening with Josh Hazelwood and his Victorian teammates James Pattinson and Peter Siddle in the side, while from 2017 onwards saw the beginning of the current Australian bowling attack, Cummins, Stark, Hazelwood and Lyon. The stars just never really aligned until 2021, where not only was he in form, but COVID and injuries affected the team. Stark, Cummins and first replacement Jai Richardson were all facing time on the sidelines, giving him the opportunity for his first baggy green. Now that he's in the side, how long can he really stay there? Well, with these performances, Scott has proven that at the very least, he deserves to be in the wider Australian test squad moving forward. The problem is, is that he is stuck behind one of Australia's best ever bowling lineups, each of them taking over 200 test wickets each. Moreover, Scott Boland isn't the only bowler knocking down the door at the moment. Jai Richardson and Michael Neeser have also recently taken their opportunities in the test side with both hands. Not to mention Lance Morris and Mark Steckety topping this year's Sheffield Shield wicket taking list. It goes back to what we said earlier, being an Australian fast bowler is very competitive and at the age of 33, it means that he has a smaller window than some of the other candidates. If you have any thoughts on who you would prefer, let me know in the comment section below. To end this, I want to put my Australian fan cap on for a second and give you an Aussie fan perspective of Scott Boland. Scott Boland is the type of person I love to have in the Australian side. Sure, he doesn't have express pace or swing the ball around corners, but I know that whether it's the Boxing Day test or day four of an almost meaningless test elsewhere, he will continue to charge in and be a constant thorn in the side of batters who hate to face his style of bowling. His inclusion in the side came after almost a decade of working hard in the domestic Sheffield Shield system, with some of those years being successful on arguably the worst first class pitch in the country. Furthermore, his public image as a quiet, humble man who shies away from publicity is a breath of fresh air in a cricket era headlined by big money and celebrity worship. He is a credit to his Indigenous Australian heritage and an example for all Australians to follow. For as long as he remains in the side, that is why Aussies will continue to chant his name in the crowd. That's why Aussie commentators go crazy when he gets a wicket. And that's why he really is that good.